in this video, the extend list method in Python. So what do I mean by the extend list method? Well, let's just say we created a list here. In this case, I'll do a equals one, two, three. Well, how could we add more values to this list? How could we add, say, a four and a five to our a value while keeping it all in the same list, no nested list, just all in the same list? Well, we could do a dot extend four, five, and now when we print out a, we have our five values here, one, two, three, four, five. Cool, so now that we know what the extend method does at a basic level, let's just take a quick jump over to the docs and I wanna point something out. So you can see that for append, it'll take any item and that includes uh, objects, things like that, strings, etc. But for the extend method, it really needs to be an iterable. So what is an iterable and what isn't? Well, one thing that isn't an iterable is a number, and this is a common gotcha. So you might wanna do something like, okay, extend 100, and you'll find that you'll get a type error because it'll say int object is not iterable. So again, it must be an iterable, whereas that method might have worked with append, it will not work with extend. So if you want to add that 100, into your list, you just gotta wrap that in a list first, and when we print that out, our 100 is there. And that's okay, because a list, of course, is an iterable. The next thing I wanna point out is some interesting stuff that happens when you're appending iterables to a list, um, such as strings or dictionaries, etc. So let's just append hey. And when I go to print that out, you'll see that we have three distinct strings, H, E, and Y. And you might be thinking, why did it do that? Why didn't it just give me my hey string? Well, if you wanted to do the hey string, you'd actually have to wrap that in a list. And when we print that out, we get our hey string. So why did this happen? Well, what happens if you wrap the list built-in function around that hey string? Well, you get a list with three, uh, three values, H, E, and Y. Another one uh, that's interesting is say a dictionary. So if you did a dictionary, and um, we'll do one is, hey, uh, two is, I don't know, it doesn't matter, Python. So when you go to run that, you only get the one and two. And so what I'm trying to point out here is that when you uh, use the list built-in function with a dictionary, you just get the keys. And it can be any keys, right? So we can do that same thing and just have, I don't know, another string, key two, or key two and key one. So when we go to run that, we get key one and we get key two. So the list built-in function is just giving us our keys. Okay, so why am I focusing so much on the list built-in function? Basically because the same thing happens when you use the extend method. So we'll go back and we'll use our extend method with this dictionary. And when we print that out, we get key one and we get key two, and we're not getting those values from that dictionary. So basically what's happening with the extend method is it's almost as if you had list in here. And so if you had list hey, um, it's that exact same thing. You see how there's no difference from the hey from before and from the current hey. So you could almost pretend that there's a list built-in function in there. Now, of course, there isn't, and you could just pass hey in directly, print that out, get our H, E, and Y values again. But you, you really, it's really helpful to think of it as if there was this list built-in function here. So uh, that same kind of thing is gonna happen with strings, with dictionaries, all types of different values. And that's the reason that you cannot pass uh, values such as one directly to it. Int is not iterable. You really need to pass a list to it or some other type of iterable. So that was a pretty long-winded explanation. Um, but again, just wanted to show you that um, a.extend um, is basically the same as a dot extend with list inside of it. So this is a behavior that's kind of unique to the extend list method and it's going to work a little bit differently than append or other uh, 
ways of concatenating lists that you might be aware of. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about how when you have a list such as A123, uh, the value you pass into it, it can actually be a little bit of a function. It doesn't just have to be straight up an iterable. And what I mean by that is you could do i for i in range 5, and then when we go to print out our list, uh, we get those values from that range. And I think it's just cool that you can do basically uh, list comprehensions inside the extend method. Uh, I talked about this in my append video as well, and I'll have a link for the append video uh, in the description, but basically same kind of thing, and we could do i times 2, and print that out again, and we have our 2, 4, 6, 8. Um, another one would be with the strings. So we talked about how strings are a little bit unique with the extend method, but let's just say we had hey, and we had Python here. When we go to print that out, you know, it's kind of interesting, right? So it's doing that operation of concatenating the strings together, but then it's also separating it out similar to the list built-in function. So if I did list, hey plus Python, um, you can see how the logic is very similar. It's basically the same. The next thing I want to talk about is how extend returns none as well. So we'll create our classic list again, a equals one, two, three. And if we wanted to extend that and add uh, another value to that, we can do that successfully, of course. But what if you did something like a equals a dot extend, and then we wanted to add five here? Well, when we go to print out a, we're actually going to have none. And we can test that by doing a equals equals none and see that a is none. And the reason for that, and I talked about this again in my append video, is because you're basically doing the equivalent of assigning a equals none. So the tip is to never reassign the list and always just to run it straight up. So if we did, um, you know, I reinitialized re our list. If we did a.extend5, then that's going to work just fine. So the tip, again, is never to do uh, list equals list.extend and just always run the command straight up and we added a second five to our list there. So in this video, I tried to point out a couple things that are unique to the extend list method, and then a couple things that are in common between all list methods, right? So the fact that they return none, the fact that you can do list comprehensions, these things are common to all list methods pretty much. But then of course, there's those, there are those couple things that are unique to the extend list method. And you know, I think the biggest one is the fact that extend and then extend with a list built-in function inside of it basically behave the same. And so that's just something that you really want to keep an eye on. So again, I have my list one, two, three, and I guess at this point in time, all I want to do is say thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.